So I want to know this one. I'm going to show you how to find the real part of z cubed. And z here is a complex number. So I've got it all pre-typed just because otherwise it would take a bit too long. The real part of z cubed. Remember that z cubed is really what we're going to focus on. And z is this complex number of the general form x plus y i. So x is the real part, y is the imaginary part, i is the imaginary unit. So first I'm going to write this as x plus y i and then cubed. So that means, remember, is that it means x plus y i times x plus y i times x plus y i. Good. Let's continue. Let's go on to step 5, essentially. I have x plus y i times x plus y i. I'm just going to FOIL that out first. So we're going back to basic rules. FOIL. So multiply out, in other words. When I do that, I'll have x times x. Right here, that's going to generate x squared. Then I'll have x times y i. That's going to give me x y i. Then I'm going to have y i times x. That's going to give me here x, y, i, then I'm going to have at the end y, i times y, i, which will give me y squared times i squared. And you very likely know that i squared is negative 1, so then this would become x squared. The x, y, i and x, y, i can be added together to form 2 x, y, i. And then remember i squared is negative 1, so it becomes negative y squared at the end. So that's the product of x plus y with itself. Let's do that one more time though. So what you have to do is take x squared my minus y squared plus 2xyi and multiply again by x plus yi. What I did is I took uh, from step 5 above x and negative y and I put them adjacent and I copied 2xyi third. So at step 6 that's what I did within the parentheses here. So now I'm going to multiply by x plus yi. Let's go through that process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute x plus yi to each term, each of the three terms above my head. So when I do that, it will look like this. x squared times x plus yi minus y times x plus yi plus 2xyi <laughs> times x plus yi. <laughs> okay, this is why I pre-typed it. <laughs> so after that, let's continue. I'm going to have to do the distributive property again. So from 7 to 8 is the distributive property. One more time. A lot of distributive property here. So I have x squared going over 2x. That's going to give me x cubed. Just follow the top of my head, please. I have x squared times yi, that's going to give me x squared yi. Then I'm going to have negative y times x, that's going to give me negative y squared x. Then negative y squared times yi, that will give me negative y cubed i. Then I'll have 2x, <laughs> 2xyi times x, that's going to give me 2x squared yi. Okay, I want to make sure I'm not misspeaking. And then 2xyi times yi which will give me 2xy squared i squared, not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Let's continue. Let's replace i squared, remember, with negative 1. Whenever you encounter it at anywhere, just replace it with negative 1. So I'm going to have the following. Down below, you see it becomes negative 2xy squared. So this positive above my head becomes this negative above my head on line 9. Keep that in mind. Let's continue. So I'm going to transition over to line 10 from line 9. And let's see here, line 9 and 8 are the same. The only difference is that in line 9 it says negative 2xy squared, and in line 8 it says positive 2xy squared i squared. Okay, so I'm going to continue. At line 10 down below, I will have uh, x cubed minus y squared. I'm just rearranging things a little bit here. Okay, x minus 2xy squared plus x squared. So let's stop for a second. The x squared minus the y squared, x minus 2xy squared. Oh boy. If you look through each of those terms, they don't have i. That means that those terms put together form the real part. Real part, that is, of z cubed. Look very carefully at these other terms that I grouped together. x squared yi, negative y cubed i, plus 2x squared yi. Each of those above my head does have i present as a factor. That means the following when I group things. So I'm going to put x cubed minus y squared x minus 2xy squared down below as just x cubed. So from 10 to 11, I copy x cubed directly, no change. And then I put negative y squared x with negative 2xy squared into negative 3xy squared. Okay, because they both have a, let's see, y squared and y squared. And then it's x and also x. So then you just negative 1 and negative 2 to get negative 3 above my head in that position. Negative uh, 3xy squared. For the parts with i, I'll have x squared y, i, and then that negative y cubed i plus that 2x squared y, i. So from each of these, you can factor i out. So when I do that, at line 11, I'm going to put a parenthesis 
and then I in front of that parentheses to indicate that it's been factored. And then I'm going to combine terms also a little bit. So this is what I mean. Take a look. If I look at, uh, let's see, at step 10, where the terms are present, written out one by one, that is, I have x squared y i, and I also have over here 2x squared y i. So I can combine those into 3x squared y after the i is factored from that term. And then also I have this extra negative y cubed, so that just comes down as negative y cubed. So what this allows me to say at the very end is down below me essentially that the real part of z cubed is x cubed minus 3xy squared. If you like, you can write it also in this form. R e of z cubed minus 3 R e of z times I am z squared. The reason is that, remember, x plays the role of the real part of z and then y plays the role of the imaginary part of z. That's why I can write this down below in this particular form. How do I do this? I just practice a lot. That's how I get pretty good at math. That's all. So that's how I use that one. And then we can also, based on this, find the imaginary part pretty easily. So remember that. Go back at step one. I just said find the real part, but we can just as easily find the imaginary part. So go all the way to the bottom. At step 13, I have the imaginary part of z cubed is just 3x squared y minus y cubed. That's just coming from the expression above my head because it's the expression with the i. And if I wanted to, I could write that using the real and imaginary notation as follows. Any occurrence over here below me of x can be replaced with the real part of z, r, e of z. Any imaginary, I'm sorry, any occurrence of y can be replaced with the imaginary of z notation. So I would say is 3 times the real part of z squared times the imaginary part of z, so i am of z, and then minus i am z cubed. I just literally over here replaced x with r e of z, and I replaced y with i m of z, and that's it. That's how you transition between the two notations. Anyway, that's all of it. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. I will see you in another video.